Hello guys, this is Terry from Genki Gaming TV and it's time for the Venoct or Orochi Origin video. I have just a little bit of information here to share with you guys. Well, there's a lot about Orochi, but we'll start off with the Venoct connotation or basically Venoct's past within Yokai Watch. Oh no, Discord is discording me. Uh, basically, he made his appearance or his debut in Yokai Watch 1 on episode, I believe it's 50. I'm going to double check that real quick because I have notes. Yes, 50, where he tries to get revenge on a yokai by searching Nate's hometown. And that yokai he wanted revenge on was Rubius J. When Vinok meets Nate, he solemnly explains what the yokai looks like, notices Jibanyan, and he gets scared because it resembles the boss yokai. And then in 51, he kind of clashes with Rubius J to a certain degree. And this basically goes on to episode 53. Where Jibanyan was ready to confess he is Rubius J until the real Rubius J shows up. So, he is then seen in Season 2, Episode 94. He, QB, and Dan Doodle, among other victims, and Haley and an Usopion's mystery. And he was first summoned by Nate. On episode 109, got it made. And he's had other appearances as well. I do want to bring up a trivia, trivial fact. When he was first introduced, he used the masculine for me or for I, or they, or Ori. But after a while, he transitioned to using the more polite and more neutral sound of Watashi. This is only important in the Japanese connotation or like in the Japanese version of this for the Japanese audience. I don't know what they did to reflect this for the English speaking audience. Maybe have him be a bit ruder. But yeah. And Venant is based off of Yamato no Orochi, the eight-headed serpent that terrorized Japan during the Age of Mythology. The god Susano, who had been expelled from the heavens after a dramatic fallout with his sister, the lovely sun goddess Amaterasu, rescues Princess Koshi Koshinada before she is sacrificed to Orochi by defeating him by offering him eight barrels of sake, then cutting off the heads of the inebriated or the drunk beasts one by one. After slaying the serpent, he cut off its heads and tails. And this was done with the legendary sword, the Kusanagi no Surugi, or Surugi. Within the serpent's corpse, Susano gave the sword to Amaterasu to own forgiveness. He once again was allowed to enter the heavens or the realm of the gods. The sword became one of the three imperial regalia of Japan, along with the mirror, the Yata no Kagami, and the jewel, the Yasakani no Mata, ma, I mean Makatama. But there's more to the story. That's just like a shortened little abbreviation of it. Basically, Susano had a true falling out with Amaterasu, like a really bad falling out. He was cast back down from the realm of the gods to the realm of man. And having been expelled from the heavens, he descended to a place called Torikami <coughs> at the head of the river He in the land of Izumo. And at that time, some chopsticks came floating down the stream. 
thinking that there must be people ahead, he went and kind of explored further and came upon a old man and old woman, the two of them who had a young girl between them. They were weeping because they knew that they were going to have to sacrifice the child to Orochi. And <clears throat> this everything began to escalate when he basically well when Susano asked what is what is the cause of your crying I originally had eight young daughters the man replied but eight forked but the eight forked serpent of Koshi that has come every year and devoured one so things are pretty serious at this point so Susanu realizes he kind of has to do something and in one of his replies he says something along the lines of I am the elder brother to the heaven shining great August deity basically referring to another god within the Japanese pantheon if that is to be so we will we offer her to thee so as this is all escalating they came up with the idea of using liquor to or sake to intoxicate Orochi by kind of doing a bait and switch so they prepared this these barrels and Orochi drank from them and part of the etymology for Orochi is O Japanese, which is wo, which is wo do chi, or wo do ti. I believe the kanji is very similar to like daiji hebi, or like big serpent, where it borrows from both of them. And like this is really interesting information because we've had other myth mythological pantheons take on snakes or hydras like the creek pantheon that was just another walk in the park moment for them and eight is a rather significant number because normally seven and nine are used a lot in Japanese mythology but ya or hachi can mean many varied things like ya o ya or 800 store or green grocer or jack of all trades. It's not every day, well it is every day when a storm god fights a sea serpent because there's nearly one situation of this in like every mythology, Thor and Jormog is one of the biggest ones. Zeus in the Typhoon, or Typhon. Hercules versus the Lernian Hydra. I mean, I just named two from the same pantheon, but Ra versus Epep. Gabriel versus Rahab. I mean, this is all tying together, but our Orochi boy is a pure boy. He, he just likes princesses. It's just part of his taste but yeah basically Susano stepped in they brewed very strong sake they built a fence around the house with eight gates gates are pretty significant and after they finished like pouring the sake they hid and waited for Yamato no Orochi because in lore all serpents love sake, and Orochi was no different. And he passed out after drinking the really so strong sake. But the funny thing is, guys, Orochi is a big pop cultural thing now, like, period. Not just Vanoct, but Orochi in general, because in Naruto there was a Orochi like creature. In One Piece, there's Orochi. Yokai Watch Orochi. The only thing that's not had an Orochi like 
character is Pokemon, which really surprises me because we've we've had snakes in the past, and Eternatus is a thing, but Eternatus is more of like a Xenomorph from the Alien series. It will be interesting to see if they ever got to the point of creating something like that. But here's another interesting lore fact for you. While Susanoo sprang into action, while he was drawing his sword, cutting Yamato no Orochi into pieces, the He River ran red with Orochi's blood. And there's even like significance in that statement. And Susanoo then stuck his sword into something hard, and the blade actually broke. And he basically peered into the cut and found a sharp sword lodged inside and that became the legendary sword or like the great sword Kusanagi no Surugi, which is now one of the three imperial treasures of Japan but yeah I'm going to give you a little bit of additional war lore here Susanu said this poem out loud Yakumo Tatsu Izumo Yae Gaki Suma Gomi Ni Yae Gaki Sukudu Sono Yae Gaki O, which means Izumo is the land protected by the clouds of plenty. And like this land of Izumo, I shall build a fence to protect the palace where my wife will live, like the clouds in this land of Izumo. So, yeah. And Susanu actually married Kushida Nada Hime and lived in the palace in, well, at Suga. But yeah, that was the lore about how Susanu defeated Orochi. Because there's not much lore about where exactly Orochi came from. It just kind of has implied in, like, different mythos that he just kind of appeared. It was just something that people were used to. And I love the fact that all serpents love Saki. It, it was just a nice touch that gives the story a little bit of character. It was also a nice touch, the symbolism of eights, because you don't, like, you see that often, but you don't see it often enough within, like, lore and stuff. It's normally sixes or sevens or nines, but eights a pretty significant number in and of itself. I want to thank you guys for watching. In December, like basically one day from now, I'm going to begin working on the Frostina Blizzaria video or begin gathering information for it. You guys have yourselves an amazing day full of blessings and happiness. Stay positive. And remember, Yokai and Mythos is everywhere. Literally everywhere. Bye bye for now.